Ben. Finally, I can hear people. Hi. Hi, Miss Bell. I can finally hear people. Okay. How is everybody doing? Good. 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 Okay, yeah. finally. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alicia. I am calling this meeting to order as co-chair. Governor Baker's extension of the March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I am calling the July 8th, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 5.33 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name at that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Deborah Ferreira. Present. Russ Vernon Jones. Present. Pat Ananabaku. Here. Darius Cage. Here. Okay. I want to take a couple of minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public wish to provide to the working group. We will not respond to your comments, but we'll listen to your comments carefully. We will then hear um, comments from any group members who have something to report. Um, on the agenda, we have the recommended agenda items by Russell Vernon Jones, priorities of part two of our charge, the resident oversight board, RFB phase two and recommendations from part one of the charge follow up. Um, our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any member of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moiston to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we will listen carefully. And at this time, I do not see any hands raised. Okay. Okay, so since we do not have any hands raised right now, I will move to the members report. Uh, this is a time for members to update us on any work they're doing or any events that are coming up. Does anybody have anything that they would like to share at this time? Um, Mr. Vernon Jones? I had mentioned at the last meeting that I would contact the ACLU to see to ask about the state police reform bill and what was not approved in it uh, last December. Uh, and they eventually connected me to Javier Luengo Garrido uh, in Northampton. Um, and we, I don't know, spent an hour on the phone today. I asked him a lot of questions. Um, he had a few things to say about that initial question, which was mostly about qualified immunity and what kind of policies the local police department had about hiring um, anyone who had complaints of misconduct on their record. Um, but we talked about a lot of things, including uh, the uh, resident oversight board and the he really encouraged us to research where the charter puts us with regard to who has various authority to appoint and dismiss, et cetera. Um, he mentioned um, something called the Mobile Crisis International, which is, a, I think, Canadian and US group um, that is looking at um, I guess it's mostly programs like CRESS or related uh, sorts of things. And uh, he said, you know, they've had as many as 60 people at these meetings. And the next meeting coming up is July 14th at 2.30 when someone from San Francisco is going to report on their uh, mobile uh, board. It may be the one that uh, Ms. Patton mentioned in the document she sent us. So if I get that information from him, he said he would send it to me. I will send it to everybody. Um, the other thing he, he actually, as it turns out, worked on the Northampton uh, committee. Um, 
And he said he has a lot of material about issues around police, you know, alternatives to police and traffic uh, control. Uh, and he said he would pull that together and send it all to me. So when I get that, I'll share it with everybody. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, Ms. Pat. Hi, everyone. So I know um, I sent out um, the work that uh, two committees uh, have been working on, subcommittees have been working on, and um, maybe some of you have not had a chance to take a look at it, but um, Alicia and myself, we worked on the um, standing committee, the hopefully the group that will replace CSWG. And if we don't have time today, um, maybe next week, but if you guys have any questions, you know, for us, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, I sent it out this uh, last night, I think. And then the second one is a traffic control that I, you know, I worked with Brianna. And also if people have questions, you know, they're all draft, nothing is set in stone. So I hope we will have time either tonight or next week to, to get input from the rest of the group. I also want to really thank uh, Mr. Rod Vernon Jones for the excellent work you've put in in the um, oversight board um, draft. And I don't know if this is the time to give input, but I just have like two quick feedback. Can I? Um, yeah, so after members report, I was going to go into that because it would be the next item on Mr. Okay. Jones' requested agenda. So if everyone's okay, I think we can, it, can we pull it up? Is that possible, Ms. Moiston? Ms. Ferreira? So I guess the only thing I was gonna say, yeah, is what's on the agenda, because unfortunately I wasn't able to kind of look at the agenda because, um, you know, I also wanted to kind of, are we going to talk about the two documents that Ms. Pat and you worked on, Ms. Lee, Ms. Walker, and the one that Ms. Owen worked on with Ms. Pat? Uh, is that all on the agenda? It falls under the agenda, yes. Can you see the agenda? Okay, I can see it now. Okay. So yeah, so then I'll just wait until, so that we can okay. go through the agenda then. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Ferreira. I did a brief overview just here of um, A through E on the agenda, um, but I thought on B we would follow up on the subgroups that we may um, that we made and follow up to see uh, what they have to report back and what work they've done so far. So some groups have drafts. I'm not sure if all of the groups that we did do, but they might be able to report something back to us. And then we have the resident oversight board. I thought we could bring that up then. Okay. Um, so. The first agenda item is the recommended agenda items from Russ Vernon Jones. And so I believe that at this point, we're getting to number three, which is creating the preliminary design for the resident oversight board. Um, so I wanted to bring that document up anyways, because uh, Mr. Vernon Jones has sent that out to the group. Um, there is a rough draft that I would like to go over. And Ms. Pat, I think you indicated that you had a few suggestions. I think this would be a good time to share it. Um, Ms. Moyston, do you have that document? Which document? I'm so sorry. No, I was taking oversight. notes. Um, the resident oversight board oh, draft that Mr. Vernon Jones sent. Oh, I can get it. I'm going to stop share so I can find it so you guys don't have to look okay. at it on my files. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm here. I'm just driving home right now. So um, I'm listening, but I'm not really trying to participate while I'm driving. Be careful driving. <laughs> Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. <laughs> you. Can you see the document that's up now, draft 7621? Yes. Thank yes, you. that's the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can I go? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. I'm sorry. So I thought, um, Mr. Ross, you you put in a lot of time and effort in this. Three things just jumped to me in general 
is the membership of uh, the oversight board. Um, my suggestion will be the seven with five BIPOC residents, not four, and then two um, white folks. So what you have as a suggestion is seven with four BIPOC and three white. I would like it to be uh, seven with five, five BIPOC and two white, white. So another thing is I'm very uncomfortable with, uh, with uh, the whole concept of mediation with a complainant and uh, APD officer, and a police officer. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I just have a mixed feelings about that. It's not something I'm very thrilled about of including mediation. Um, as something that you know the oversight board um, should be involved with, and just because of the power structure, uh, power structure between you know APD and the resident, especially uh, the BIPOC folks, and then the last one is uh, recommendation around internal investigation. What what is the point of having? oversight board because what we have right now with the AP internal investigation is not working. Um, it doesn't go anywhere. Why do we need to put it in there? Those are those the three issues that jump up to me. Thank you. Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, I'm fine with seven and five. Do we want to specify, given that BIPOC includes a lot of different backgrounds, do we want to specify how a minimum number of Black people for that? Two or three. OK. Uh, the mediation is something that seems to be recommended in a number of places in the literature. I don't think we should compel mediation from the way we write it up, but I'd like to give the resident oversight board as many sort of possible tools to use as they think make sense. Uh, and that's the, that's the reason I included mediation there. Um, as far as internal investigation, I mean, the police are going to do internal investigation regardless. Um, and, but, I, but I agree, it's the, it's the addition of the, the investigations that the resident oversight board are going to make. And those are the ones that are going to make a difference. Miss um, Bowman and then Miss Pack. So, um... I kind of agree with both of you in this interesting sort of way, but um, what I was thinking is that, <clears throat> like, I agree with Ms. Pat when it comes to the to the um, internal uh, internal affairs or internal affairs, um, like uh, investigation or whatever. Um, but I think that it may be more beneficial. It could be possibly more beneficial if 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 they have like if they've had the backup of the Crest program, and you know, because like in Crest does a certain level of you know. They check in with, with the person who's having an issue. They check in with what they what they want to do. They get all they gather all the evidence. So like there might be more likely a punishment be handed down, especially if Crest is recommending something specific to internal affairs. I don't know if that makes any. I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense, but um. Usually internal affairs basically works on their own and looking for their own stuff. But if they have documents that are gathered by Crest and then given to them and being like that have to be included as part, like the Crest recommendations have to be included as part of the investigation. That 
that might make an, a, di a difference on how investigations are going, especially if we're coming up with um, uh, Tashin, I think we are losing you a bit. I think we may have lost Sheena. I know she said she was driving. Um, so maybe we can come back to her when she regains signal. Um, <clears throat> I think Miss Pat also, did you also have your hand up? Yes. So, I mean, I speak with experience, meaning that I know people who have been through the APD internal investigation, any hint of including this on oversight will just discourage a resident to even come forward for complaint. If, um, and I know either way they're going to do their own internal investigation. I guess I'm questioning why do we need to put it in there? Because the whole point of oversight board is to encourage um, residents to come forward if they feel wronged by APD. And if we're saying that um, included the internal investigation, to me, it's not credible. I'm sorry to say that. It's just, it will be uh, off-putting. It's just, you know, I'm speaking, you know, I'm making, um, that's just my own opinion. It's something about it that really rubs me, rubs me in the wrong way. I just don't think it should be in there. And I don't want to label the issue, but, um, and then the reason for mediation is just the power structure. I can imagine having a bipod person like sitting in the same room with a police officer that, you know, I think it will be too trauma, uh, re traumatizing for folks is where I'm coming from. So, but I won't say any of that then I'm, I'm done, but that's just my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. So I guess I'll take on, like, in terms of mediation, I think, you know, I, I definitely hear you, Ms. Pat, and I, and, and I hear Mr. Vernon Jones. I think I would want it more kind of like a, an option. I don't think it should be forced, though, right? Because I think some, some folks, and you do want kind of a bag of tricks when you're kind of dealing with those types of situations. And I'm, I'm talking about it because of my experience, obviously, you know, uh, being the director at Equal Opportunity, where we, you know, did investigations and stuff around discrimination and harassment. Um, and so we never would impose mediation or anything like that, arbitration, mediation, any of those things, or any type of facilitation, unless both parties wanted to do it, right? So if one party doesn't want to do it and the other party wants to do it, then it, it can't, you know, you can't do that. So both parties have to voluntarily engage in it. Um, so it could be an option, but I wouldn't want it to be anything mandated, anything to say, well, you'd have to go through med mediation first before some type of discipline is imposed or something like that. You know, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be okay with that at all, but it, it could be an option if both parties wanted to, to engage in it voluntarily, you know? Oh, Ms. Bowman, I don't think you're on. Okay, here we go. Um, and then in terms of the um, internal affairs, I guess for me, and I guess Mr. Vernon Jones, since you wrote this, maybe you have more, more information and that's maybe something we need to get from the APD, at least for me, it would be beneficial, is what is the process? I do understand that, uh, that you know, APD usually they do the internal affairs and everything. So is that the only thing they do? They do internal affairs investigation, which usually is what? Is it someone that they bring another police officer they bring from outside? Is it someone they have internal that does internal investigation? I guess I wanna get more of a sense of what is in place now uh, before, because I would agree with Ms. Pat, right? That if it's them doing their internal investigations, even if it's someone from the outside, it's not something that usually, you know, the community is very, um, you know, trusting of, you know? So I really like the, the concept of having kind of 
um, you know, maybe a cadre of investigators at the disposal of uh, the board um, in order to do that. And the only thing that I'm thinking in, in terms of why maybe you included it, and I don't know, I would have, I want to hear that from you, Mr. Vernon Jones, is that are there a lot of complaints and therefore you're thinking it's just not feasible for cadre investigators to do it, but I would feel more trusting and I would want the community to be more trusting if we had some independent investigators kind of there ready to go and to do those investigations as opposed to it being their internal investigation from the police. And then one more thing though, I have one more. And then for me, the other thing that I saw in terms of your, um, what you wrote up, which I thought was very good, you know, and you did a lot of great work on this, was in terms of the selection of the board members. I know that you said it would be appointed by the town manager, but I would want somewhere it stated in terms of kind of like that, either the town manager would have a, a selection committee or something like that. I wouldn't want it just appointed by the town manager. You know, um, I would want some type of selection and that we should put that in the document um, so that then, and then in that selection committee, that that selection committee should also be comprised of majority BIPOC people, so on and so forth, so that we can make sure that whoever's selected on the board um, are people that, of course, you know, know what they're talking about, are, you know, majority BIPOC and are going to do the work as opposed to it just being appointed by one person, which would be the town manager. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, no, I find these comments really helpful. And I, I certainly agree. We should write in a majority BIPOC selection committee. Um, and I think media, I, well, let me ask about mediation. Do, I certainly think a community member should only be enter into mediation if they decide they want that. I think it should be totally voluntary for the community member. Does it need to also be voluntary for the officer or can we compel an officer if it's voluntary for the community? It, no. It's just that from what I know is it just doesn't work. If both people- It doesn't are, work, yeah. Yeah, okay. it just doesn't All work. Right. Yeah. Let's write it in as it, it has, to be, uh, has to be voluntary for both. Yeah. I don't actually know what, what they do for internal affairs. I mean, I mean, I think we need to have a dialogue with the police department, about, with the chief at least about this and we'll, you know, we'll learn a lot. And I don't know how many investigations there are, but I think a number of members of our group have expressed a hope that there will, how many complaints there have been. Mem people have said, we hope there are gonna be more complaints. We hope people will be more willing to come forward. Uh, so I don't think we have any way of knowing what the, um, you know, what the, what the numbers are gonna be until we, until we get into it. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Pat. Okay, so to respond, as far as I know, and based on, uh, based on experience um, of other people too, is that the chief of police is the one that handles the internal investigation. So I don't want to like go into like details, but that, you know, is the one that, you know, handles that. I'm very familiar with mediation. In fact, I'm a big, uh, uh, proponent for mediation with special education. I actually always urge parents to start with mediation. I think it can be very effective, like what Ms. De Deborah said, if both parties are willing to engage in it as voluntarily. So I'm very familiar with that. It depends on the situation, but the whole idea of you know, police and resident and mediation, it's not making sense to me. It makes sense with special education. It makes sense, you know, in uh, civil rights issues. And I know policing is also civil rights issues, but, you know, the perception, I mean, the trauma, I don't know, you know, put it in, in there just doesn't sit wet with me. I, I just, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. It, it's just something about police that freaks people out and then you want to engage with them in mediation, basically, even though it will be voluntarily, you're forcing people to, this, to be in the same room, you know, uh, with complainants, I, you know, I think it's too traumatizing for people. Special education, yes, uh, civil rights issues, um, 
they use it in other areas, yes, but this I'm not sure. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira? Ms. Pat, then do you foresee this kind of not having the mediation in there, which I'm fine with too. I mean, I don't have an issue with it if, if, if you don't think, because for me, my thought would just be obviously very, very low level, right? Um, you know, let's say, and I get what you're saying, sometimes just being with the police is not low level, right? Because people get traumatized by it, but I can envision something where it is just kind of a straight miscommunication or whatever. And, you know, and both people are willing to do it. That's what my thinking was, but I'm good not including it too. You know what I'm saying? Um, because then you're, you envision just kind of going through the process, right? Investigation, having kind of independent investigators that the boards, the board has, right? This cadre of investigators that will utilize and then kind of going through the process and then, and then, um, making some recommendations at the end, right? Because I think that's something else too that I think we need to make sure that we're clear, right? In terms of, you know, you know who's making those recommendations. And I think you did spell that out a little bit, um, Mr. Vernon Jones, but I think I wanna look at that a little bit more intently because I, I haven't spent as much time on this because I think we wanna be very, um, if that's the process that we wanna go with and not have any other, kind of options, then we want to make sure that we're very clear in terms of what that process is going to be, you know, in terms of the investigation, how they engage, you know, throughout the process, and then, and then, um, you know, the recommendations and what, what, who's going to be making, um, you know, responses for, for discipline, and then putting the, the, the recommendation in place and what's gonna happen. I think you did kind of say something like, okay, it might go to the town council or whatever, but we wanna be very clear on that so that at the end of the day, we're not wasting everyone's time because it is gonna be a process, right? For, to get from A to Z is gonna be a process. So if, if they go from A to Z and at the end of the day, the recommendations made are not put in place and then it just goes dead, like, you know, especially like in terms of what happened with our recommendations and stuff like that, we're gonna have more of a problem on our hands than not, you know? And then the other um, issue that I think we need to tackle and be very clear on is also confidentiality. I did like you putting it in there, Mr. Vernon Jones, that we need to make, you know, to kind of go into executive session because that's gonna be very important. You know, people that are gonna go through the process are gonna to wanna to be able to speak confidentially so that they're able to, um, you know, go through it and, 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 and make sure that, um, you know, they're not gonna get retaliated against and things like that. So, but I'll stop there for now. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones. You know, at the end, I included a list of things that I that weren't covered here yet. And uh, one that I forgot to put in there, but should certainly be there is training uh, for, the, uh, for the Resident Oversight Board. Um, everything I've read recommends considerable training uh, and an opportunity to learn, you know, how the police normally do things, what, you know, what the policies, you know, require, uh, and also being trained, you know, being trained by the National Association. Um, so I will, you know, I, I will keep working on that, on that part of it. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Staff? So, uh, Mr. Ross, I, you know, are you envisioning um, including like bylaws for this board at all? Or would that mm -hmm. be a bylaw? Mr. Vernon Jones? I do think we need a bylaw. Yeah. Um, and, but we, we kind of have to work with the police department and, um, you know, maybe even the town lawyer to get a picture. You know, we have, we have to decide, first of all, how it's going to operate. Then we write it into a bylaw. And because we want to give this group subpoena power, that bylaw will probably require the approval of the attorney general of the, of the state. Um, but uh, it seems like the first step is to, you know, come to some agreement about what we want. And we, you know, the, 
again, you know, like mediation, the resident oversight board only works if there's some trust developed between the police department and the board. Uh, and I think, you know, if I write in some of the revisions you've, you know, provided tonight, that it would be useful to open a dialogue. I'm not sure a public meeting with all of us present is the best way to do it. I think for a few of us to go meet with the chief and open a dialogue and get started on seeing, you know, what are we up against and where, where do we already have agreement and what, what, how, it, how it might work. But eventually, yes, I think all this needs to be written into a bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, so I am in agreement and I just wanted to make a comment um, in regards to the mediation and that <clears throat> I agree with Ms. Pat that I don't think it would be common for a complainant to want mediation, but maybe changing the language to something like upon request of a complainant only that mediation may be available, mediation services may be available, but only if they specifically request it that we would suggest that that be an option. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then, so I also just wanted to go back to Mr. Vernon Jones' suggestion of um, having a conversation with the police chief or the police department. And so I um, am in agreement with that statement because I also believe that in order for this to be successful, they need to have a trusting relationship um, with the APD and so that they can really so that when complaints are made and when suggestions are made that things follow through in the proper manner. Um, and so I'm wondering if everyone else in the group or what the thoughts are on that. Is there anybody who is, um, is anyone opposed to that idea? Ms. Ferreira? So you're asking in terms of like, in order for things to work, go smoothly, I guess I'm not clear on what you're asking. That's why I didn't respond. Can you repeat that again? Because I'm a little bit. Confused. Yeah, so I think um, like in order for us to really get the charge written and everything we want with the resident oversight board, that it would be helpful for us to have a conversation with the police department. Um, one, because we don't yet have consultants on board. So just running certain things by the police chief. And so how will these work with the, your current policies? Or is this possible that we can get a lot of information in a conversation like that? But then also once the resident oversight board is up and running, that it would, it would be important for them to have trust with each other. So having conversations beforehand, I think is important, but I'm wondering how you all feel about that. Okay, so I definitely agree with uh, Mr. Ross that, you know, there has to be trust between the new board and APD and also to have a good working relationship. That's the only way the oversight board can actually be very effective. In terms of, you know, um, inviting APD at this point, I'm just worried about time, the workload that we have. And maybe along, along the line, maybe around September to see how we're doing with our charge, you know, because I know it's been extended to November, but I just feel we have, uh, I just feel that we have a, um, a lot on our hands. So I'm assuming that Mr. Ross, you are uh, communicating with APD, is that correct? I have not talked with the APD at all oh, yet. Okay. I wanted to talk okay. to you first. I would be happy to talk with them, but I'd like to have one or both of our chairs with me if I'm doing that. I don't, I don't want to represent this board alone. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm all for what you're suggesting, Alicia. It's just we have to be realistic with our time. And I know um, fatigue is already set it in, you know, sometimes, you know, because of our workload. So. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Bowman. Um, I had, <clears throat> excuse me. I had, I just wanted to say something because I just think, um, 
in general, my general feeling is I don't trust police. But I also have to take the, the, I have to look at it as like they're human, right? And if you don't give a human a chance to make a mistake, then um, you never allow them a chance to grow and change. And so my kind of question is, how do we find a way to give them an opportunity to really, you know, to really come forward and make some change? So like, let's say there's an incident that happens. Let's say we have some, they, somebody gets reported. Let's say we make a recommend, you know, let's say Crest or whatever makes some, you know, so this is a future request. Oh, they make a recommendation that this person, um, go, you know, go see this, you know, specific therapist that has to do with like, you know, race, you know, something having to do with race relations and the history of policing and why, why they might've responded to this respondent in this way and not responded to another respondent who did a similar thing in that way, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, and so our recommendation is that they, they look deeper into their own personal racism and so on and so forth. And so let's say the officer decides to do that. Shoot, hold on. Let's say the officer decides to do that. Try not to get popped by oil. And, um, you know, and then you start, you know, and then they're on this like probationary time and you're, you're able to like really see if they're like implementing those things or, really take, you know, changing how they're running, how they're, th that personal officer is doing things, how they're operating. And so like, like, or is that what we're, the kind of things that we're looking for with the CREST program and the resident oversight program? Like, are we looking to, to in a way, help officers make change on how they are policing the community, our communities, or are we just like, you know, looking towards, you know, because I'm thinking about it and it's like, you know, not that I think that we should have ever, but I, you know, I look at it and I'm like, well, we've never, I don't know that we've had anything as bad where an officer has killed a suspect or a perceived suspect, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I'm just wondering how, Like, even though I look at the history and everything, I'm wondering how, how are we gonna approach this in a way that um, we're not necessarily lumping Amherst police officers in with, you know, officers who are out there literally killing black people. You know what I'm saying? You, I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like we're giving these officers an opportunity to be better police officer, and I don't even like police officers, the name, word police officers, because it's bad, a bad connotation for me. But like, what I'm saying is that we're allowing them to be human and be able to correct things that they learn through going, you know, going through, you know, the all boy, the all blue, whatever boy club, whatever that's called, you know, the boys in blue, whatever, like having them reevaluate, like holding them accountable for reevaluating themselves and then from that point, if they're refusing to do that, then, then, then we're looking at harsher things or are we just looking to bring the hammer down type thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to get a better idea of what the role is of press and the community. Um, uh, what was that, the community responders? <laughs> I forgot what the name was. Right. Yeah. The oversight board? The oversight community, yeah, I'm trying to find, you know what I'm saying? Because like the oversight community in other places don't necessarily work, but maybe it's because like officers are so afraid of getting reprimanded and they're, you know, and they're, they're covering for each other type thing. You know what I'm saying? But like, if we make it so it's not like, look, this is just, you're just fired. It's more of like, look, we're recommending that you get help to understand what your role is better. And obviously it's on their bill, but it's like, 
I don't know. Like, I think that there, there's a way that, that it can be done in that's progressive um, and holds accountability um, and allows for people to grow. Because I've been in situations where I've been with people who grew up and being racist and being having opinions. And then upon certain interactions, they, those opinions started to change and they got, they changed more and more once they started learning about what it really was and what it really was about. So I don't wanna just close the door on people grow, allowing people to grow, I guess is what I'm saying. So I'm just trying to understand, I guess, a little better. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. So I think, um, and feel free to correct me if I'm misspeaking, that you're wanting to know how we will specify like disciplinary repercussions as opposed to just like termination? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, and so I guess I, I haven't, I don't have a, a specific answer to that. I'm wondering, Mr. Vernon Jones, if you had any thoughts on that while writing this document? Yeah, I mean, Tashina, I think you raise a really key question. Um, you know, how, because, you know, it takes a relatively severe offense to get an officer terminated, which means that most of the minor offenses are going to be committed by officers who are going to continue to be officers in Amherst for a while. And this resident oversight board is, I, I don't think it's something we can really do in advance. I think the board itself is going to have to figure out what's the combination of sort of consequences and learning and probation and, you know, what, I mean, I think there has to be the, the, the possibility of termination has to be there, but how the board handles things to uh, get the department to um, do a better job and be more respectful and be and earn community trust, I think is the big job for this board to figure out. And there may be situations in which an officer does something that's incorrect, but when we investigate, we find out that their supervisor didn't give them good guidance or may have even given them harmful guidance. Uh, and you know, who knows whether the, you know, there may be consequences for the, the supervisor as you know, maybe in addition to or instead of the, the line officer. But I I I think it's a, it's a really key issue, but I don't think we can figure all that out in the way we write this. I think the, the folks who are doing it and are sure have the responsibility of implementing it are gonna have to think that through. Right, that's, I, that's, I, I wasn't necessarily saying that we should think it through, but I think that somehow in the charge, we should, I feel like it should be acknowledged mm -hmm. that, you know, it's we're, our goal, our end goal is not to just be firing officers left and right. Our end goal is to help our officers become more productive, more community-based officers versus out there policing, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I was going, like in within the charge, that we're, you know, the charge that we're trying to give to them is to be like, okay, like you need to think about different ways that you can, you can encourage the officers to be better at their job, you know, while holding themselves accountable for mistakes. Everybody's human. We make mistakes. We recognize that. So let's not continue to make mistakes. Let's be better type thing. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, and then I'm wondering, I, I also agree with Ms. Bowman that then we should probably indicate something like that in there that, that we would hope or that we would leave it to the resident oversight board to, um, I don't know, determine the, the range of disciplinary repercussions, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I, I took notes while Tashina was talking and I'd be happy to work on some language uh, to see if we can. Oh, and Deborah has her hand up. Oh, 
<clears throat> Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I hear all that, but I think, I mean, for me, like when, when I think of a resident oversight board, I really think about a board that's there, right? Because complaints that have been coming to, to the APD has not been answered, right? They have not been dealt with fairly. Um, people feel like, you know, they, they're being, you know, harassed, dealt with, intimidated, whatever, by the police. And they complain or they're intimidated to complain or even complain because nothing's going to happen, right? So I think for me, in terms of resident oversight board is to really make sure that, you know, the, the board is there and they have the power, they're independent, right? They're an independent board and they have the power and the wherewithal to kind of, you know, if a complaint comes in, that they are going to look at the complaint. Now there's going to be a, a level, you know, there's going to be a range, right? You know, from those kind of like complaints that are going to be more lower range, that could be what Ms. Bowman is talking about, more educational, more this, more that. But then there's going to be those that it's going to be disciplined, right? It's going to be, and all of it could be up to including termination, you know? And I think we need to make sure that that board has that power to do that, you know? Because I think that if we just come in with kind of like, yeah, you know, kind of already putting in those, those boundaries on them that, hey, you know, we want to make sure that they're just getting a talking to, or let them educate. I, I hear it that everyone makes mistakes and stuff, but they're the police. Remember, they're going through training. We need to make sure that obviously the training is good. They're going through training. So if they're making certain mistakes, you know, uh, th that can cost people, you know, uh, you know, really not their lives, right? Not that, you know, at least that I know of that anyone's been killed, but basically trauma where now they don't want to leave the house, where now they're afraid for their, themselves and their family and things like that. So I think, you know, for me anyway, this is my opinion, I want to empower them to be able to kind of look at those complaints and kind of deal with them, you know, as they come, you know, whether it be low, low level, low parameter, and yes, educational, giving that, that officer an opportunity, or boom, discipline, da da da, da you know, I want to give them that, mm -hmm. that wherewithal and that, yeah, that power to do so. I don't want to limit them and say, well, let's give these officers, you know, one chance, two chance, three chance, you know, I want to give them I want to give this board the, you know, based on whatever investigation comes in, right? Because we're going to be looking into it. These these independent investigators are going to be looking into it. Then they make, you know, those kind of decisions. You can give them a, a bag of, okay, yes, you know, talking to verbal warning, education, blah blah blah. Yeah, we can provide that, but I don't want to hamper them. I want them to be able to do what they need to do so that they they put together the right recommendation that's going to deal with it because the community wants that, right? Because they haven't been getting that. So I want to make sure they have that. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Pat. So what I was, I was kind of where I was coming from was kind of in the same realm, but it was like, what I was thinking is that, or how I thought that this was going was that this, the resident oversight board was someplace that people could go to first, that they didn't have to do an investigation. They didn't have to bring it to, to the police. They could bring it to the resident oversight board and the resident oversight board would help gather them, them to gather information and would present it to the police if that person wanted them to, and then would su su um, oversee to make sure that they followed through with any recommendations or punishments or whatever the case whatever the case may be with the officers involved you know what i'm saying so like the resident oversight board would be essentially a middleman so that people who are not comfortable talking to the police or filling it you know or making an a um a complaint against the police wouldn't have to go in and make a complaint they would the oversight board would follow through and make sure that, that things are getting taken, I am gonna be, but would make sure that things are getting taken care of. But maybe I'm misunderstanding. Um, thank you, Ms. Bowman, Ms. Pat. So I thank everybody's um, comments and opinion on everything. I'm looking at a time, it's well, almost one hour. And what I will say with what Mr. Ross has created for us that he started, um, it's a working document. It's work in progress. We will never be able to put everything that we want. You know, I read it 
And there was just uh, the feeling of, wow, you know, he really has spent a lot of time digging to do this. And, you know, there are some language that were very strong that will be, that will encourage people to actually want to apply, you know, language about making sure that the police union, that the oversight board will not be part of the um, negotiation, something that's a language that Mr. Ross put in there, which I really liked. And also the fact that there will be no retaliation for members of the oversight board. I mean, there is a lot of good things about, you know, the document created that um, maybe every week, you know, if somebody has something else to add on to or something, but we need to move on and talk about other agenda we have tonight. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, sorry, Ms. Ferreira, did you want to say something? Else? Well, I guess in terms of that, I mean, I do agree that obviously we have a bunch of other stuff to discuss, but I guess how do we want to proceed, right? Because we want to obviously provide, um, you know, more feedback, you know, and, you know, like Ms. Pat said, and Mr. Vernon Jones, obviously this was a, a beginning document, which is very good, but we're all going to have, you know, our kind of our feedback and want to massage it some more. So I guess just timeline, maybe we could figure that out and then leave this. But I guess what would be by when do you want feedback so that then, you know, do we want to talk about it again next week? Well, even though next week I won't be at the meeting because I'll be traveling back. But whatever, if you guys wanted to talk about it next week, you know, when we provide feedback by then, I guess I just wanted a timeline type of thing. Um, so, Mr. Vernon Jones, if we could just, um, that question's a little bit more directed at you, but if we could come up with a time that maybe if there are any other suggestions that people did not get to cover tonight or that people come up with after now that they can send those to you. Um, and that I know you said you had a few notes that you were going to look into a few things and that you could bring those proposed things to the group. Uh, I don't know if you want to come back to this next week or put it out. Um, to the following week so that you have a little bit more time to work on that or how everybody feels about that? Well, I mean, my preference, frankly, would be for me to write up the, the content of what people said tonight uh, and then have a couple of us go begin a dialogue with the police department. It's going to be a lot of back and forth. I'm happy to take, you know, additional comments on what's, you know, what's already written if there are things that people didn't get to say tonight or think of later. Um, what's this Thursday? I don't know. Noon on Monday? Is that, I mean, it's not our last chance. It'll still be a working draft. You know, we'll still come back to it. Uh, but if we could say by noon on Monday, we'd have anything for this first draft and let us open a dialogue with the police. Um, but that we retain, you know, we'll be clear in any dialogue that this is not this is not approved by our group yet. We retain the ability to make any changes, but we want to get get some something going back and forth and, and learn from them about what they're up against in, in dealing with this. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I guess for me, I'm good with, um, you know, like a, a, a smaller group meeting with the police, you know, obviously, you know, reporting back and stuff, but I guess, um, when we do get closer to, you know, finalizing this resident oversight board document, I would want the police, whomever it is that you all, you know, whoever the subcommittee meets with or whatever, to kind of meet with the whole group. You know what I'm saying? I think it would be good for the whole group, though, to kind of meet with the police chief and his representatives mm -hmm. uh, before we kind of finalize everything. I wouldn't want it to just be in, in kind of subcommittee. Right. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. I'm also um, in agreement with that. I think that's a great idea. And then combining that with Ms. Pat's earlier suggestion that if we can make that happen um, like in late September or in October, um, that that would be great. And that um, if it's okay with everybody else that Mr. Vernon Jones and myself, and if Brianna is available, I will have to reach out to her. We'll try to find a time that we can um, start the dialogue with the police, with the police chief um, not within a meeting, just in lieu of time. There we go. 
And does that work for you also, Mr. Vernon Jones? Yes. Um, I wouldn't, I don't want us to be too explicit about when we're going to take this up. You know, I mean, if, if we come to an agreement and want to move forward, uh, if we're ready sooner than, you know, September or October, uh, we might want to do it so that we can get some attorneys working on drafting the bylaw. Um, so I'm, I, I agree that we ought to take on our other tasks before we come back to this. But when we're ready, if we're ready, uh, we probably would. I'd, I'd want to get it, this back on the, the agenda so we aren't delayed in implementing it. OK, great. Um, so I think we can move to the next agenda item since we are all in agreement. Um, oh, very so much. That, was, that was all very helpful. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. That was, that was an amazing first draft. Um, I do think that we got some other drafts from Ms. Pat, and I was wondering if we can go over those now because we do have the traffic control draft and then also the standing committee draft. Um, and so I would like to take a quick look at those things. And so these are also going to be running drafts. These are just drafts. We are still reserving the ability to make changes to these, um, but we would like some input from the group. Mr. Vernon Jones? Can we do the standing committee first? Yes. Sorry, um, Ms. Moyston. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so actually, um, myself and uh, Alicia worked on this, and we're not set, you know, in anything. This is just like a draft. So, you guys feel free to make comments and give us suggestions. So, we came up with two different names uh, for the standing committee: um, Equity and Committee Safety Commission our Community Safety, Diversity and Inclusion Committee. You know, we don't have to come up with a name tonight, but um, if you guys think about other names, let us know. And the rest of the stuff, um, do I need to read it or do people just have questions? I'll give people like five minutes to read the, our work. And let, let us know when you're done reading. If you could raise your hand if you when you're done reading. Are people done reading? Okay. Okay. So, so basically what we did, I actually went to MS website and looked at some committees and, you know, how uh, information I need to gather to, uh, for us to present tonight. And basically that's, that's what we did. Um, do people have questions for us? Ms. Ferreira. So I guess I have a question. Because um, mm -hmm. I think like, so I, I, it was good that um, you went on the, the website to look at and, and obviously like this document is good. Thank you, uh, Ms. Walker and, and Ms. Pat for, you know, working on it. But I guess my question is this, because I see a lot of kind of like the uh, diversity, equity, inclusion language in this. Um, doesn't the town have though an equity group or whatever? 
Um, so I guess my thing would be, okay, what would be different from that group and this group, right? Because for me, what I was thinking this group would do, you know, first and foremost, and then continue forward. But the first thing would be to kind of like the purpose would be like what you all said, said that to ensure the imp implementation of all the CSWG recommendations and track progress. Um, and then, you know, advance diversity, equity, including community safety in Amherst. I think that's kind of the key thing for me, uh, because then I guess it gets muddled for me is kind of the charge, right? Provide oversight and implementation of CREST and diversity, equity, inclusion departments, because then that limits it to kind of just CREST and the diversity, equity, inclusion departments. I was kind of still seeing the purpose as that overall purpose and then kind of like, yeah, supporting, it could support, you know, all these, these aspects, but that's the purpose. So. I guess for me, that's my question. Um, and so so I, that's a very good question. So, so what I understood in creating committees, for what I found out on the website, is when you um, determine what the purpose is, then you need to list what exactly would this group will be doing. So we are tempted, um, Alicia and myself are tempted to come up with some of the issues that, ha that we've been discussing in CSWG. And um, you asked the question about the equity that the town already have. To me, I think that should continue, but I don't feel, I don't feel that is very broad enough to be inclusive of the whole of Amherst. And so this committee, I see it like town-wide. I could be wrong, maybe Ms. Moistin can clarify. I, I don't see it in competition. However, I see it as supplementary. I see this group as what the town needs. And I see the equity that it, the, the, the town um, government has as being complementary. It's, you know, I'm the one who was pushing for, you know, to have a, a continuity, to continue to push for what CSWG has been advocating for. So we don't want to lose anything uh, like the multicultural center, the um, youth empowerment center, the, you know, uh, BIPOC folks being involved in the budget process and all that stuff. I mean, I don't know how else, that's how I understood how you should do the charge. Like what is it that this group will be doing? And I hear what you're saying, um, um, Ms. Ferreira, like it sounds very limiting, but it, this is like a sampling, and I'm happy. You know, we're happy to you know to get input um, from everybody. We can reward any of the of, of the stuff. Um, I did put in in terms of special municipality employee. What that means is that you know um, most of the uh, committees in this town, and there were about fifty, about fifty. You know, give and take. Believe it or not. And I was looking at the names of members. They are mostly retirees or, you know, um, yeah, with, you know, I don't recognize like, you know, residents who have like young children or working parents or single parents or um, I don't see too much diversity. And I think it's very imperative that um, if we want diversity in different committees that uh, folks get compensated so that they can use it to pay for childcare. And if people are going to meetings, they can just order food that night instead of worrying to cook and things like that. So just like says WG being given stipend, um, I'm, you know, we're recommending that this standing committee should also be given stipend. I strongly believe that all the committees in this town should be given stipend because we have the resources. And if people choose not to accept it, that's fine. But that's the only way you can get people to really volunteer and help out in this town. The whole idea of doing free volunteer work just doesn't sit well with me. So I, um, so that's what that um, special somewhere, uh, yeah. Does anybody have any concern about the um, membership of the group? We're recommending seven with five BIPOC folks. Mr. Vernon Jones. 
Well, I think this is an awesome first draft and totally appreciate the two of you working on it. Uh, I think it does a lot of, a lot of the job. Um, I wanted to ask about a couple of things. Rotating two and three year terms, what, what's the reason for having both? Well, we started with two year uh, scat, um, stacker, staggered <laughs> term. And then we started questioning like, how is that going to work out? Say that, you know, the group is formed in the fall and it's two year term. We don't want the group to be completely um, like every everybody's term to expire in two years. Like with for us to retain some members, while some you know expires, and then yeah, that's our thinking. Does that make sense? Yeah. When but when someone once it's underway and someone gets appointed newly to the committee, would they be appointed to a two-year term or a three-year term? So some people will be two year term, some people will be three year term. Oh, so they'll be both. Okay. Yeah. And am I right where it says charge? Yeah. It's it's not just that line there. It's everything under that is part of the charge, right? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I yes. think I think this would look different if it were, you know, just formatted, you okay. know, slightly differently. Okay. Yeah, it's everything, you know below the charge, that's correct, yes. Um, may I continue? Yes, please, yeah. I'm just wondering about using the word oversight with regard to the Div diversity, equity, and inclusion department. Um, we're, you know, we're gonna be hiring someone and I want this committee to be really supporting that person. And I don't, you know, I, I just, I worry that somebody taking the job, well, they, you know, they're gonna to have to be answerable to a lot of different people, but um, I don't know. I just have a feeling I'd rather see it. I mean, I think it's a support and assist, uh, you know, really works. Um, I'm not sure whether this group should be thinking of itself as one more boss of the DEI director. So Alicia, you want to speak to that? Um, well, I think that we were hoping, well, because we're unsure of who the DEI director will be, right? So we don't know if they're going to be coming from out of town or if they're going to be here. Um, and so I think that we would want them to, yes, number one, be able to provide support services, but that they will also be able to provide sort of guidance. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what we, I mean, maybe that that's what we mean more so by oversight so that if they're sort of, for lack of a better way to explain it, veering off in a direction that we had not wanted them to go in or had not foreseen that we may be able to sort of guide them back to the original intention behind everything um, because we just really don't want the intention to get lost. So if I may add also, um, thank you, Mr. Ross, for raising that. The word oversight, um, I did think about it and we should not assume that whoever gets this job is, we don't know what we're going to get. What if this person is status quo? We're stuck, what do we do? So. I think this standing committee, the whole purpose is to be supportive. It's very different from um, the resident oversight board, very, very different. Yeah. So um, if you read it, uh, Mr. Ross, in the way of boss, you know, I don't like that. And thank you for your feedback. So we need to use probably another word for the oversight because it's not intention. I do not want this standing committee to feel like uh, we're, policing um, the, DEE, the DEI department and also the CRES department. We want to be supportive, but at the same time, I do have this lingering concern, like we don't know who, who we're going to get, you know, if they just did just to um, keep their job and, you know, be part of the status quo. I mean, that is, would be a nightmare for me. Yeah. 
Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a good point that you brought up, Mr. Vernon Jones. I mean, I think I was looking at it more kind of like provide uh, or oversee the Im implementation of CREST and diversity, equity, inclusion departments. And I think we should also include oversee the imp implementation of CREST, diversity, equity, inclusion departments, youth empowerment, um, you know, center, the BIPOC uh, multicultural center. You know, I think we, we should kind of, that's how I was seeing it. And then kind of put under there, you know, like, you know, that this group should take part in meetings that are in terms of creation of CREST, meetings in creation of the part, the, the, the Department of Equity Inclusion, possibly be on the hiring committee, um, you know, be on at meetings for the youth empowerment. I think we could be a little bit more kind of, you know, provide a little bit more detail, like a little bit more meat in that area to kind of see, but that's kind of how I was seeing it, not necessarily providing oversight, like we're going to be supervising them, but overseeing the implementation of all of those things that we had said. And that includes also making sure that the police um, numbers are decreased, because that was another recommendation that we put in, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think we should probably kind of like be explicit in terms of what we mean. So, because we see, right? We see that if we don't kind of state it, then it's as if it doesn't exist, you know? Yeah. So I yeah. think we, we just want to include all of those things. That would be my feedback. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, Ms. Pat? Okay, so thank you so much for your uh, suggestion. What I would like to see happen is, and I, you know, I know we all have a lot on our plate, if people could please like, um, comment this is in word document and just i really don't don't care just make changes you need to make and um we'll by wednesday next week is that realistic for people uh to work to make changes and and then i you know we can refine it for next week discussion or should we push it for two weeks Yeah, I won't be there. So obviously, I would say two weeks, but uh, yeah, two weeks. Uh, you know. yeah, well, yeah, two weeks because you know, Deborah, we really, really need your input with your experience as you know DEI at UMass, and I'm hoping that you will consider um, applying for this committee because I'm very interested as well. I would like to apply to it too. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, yes, I I agree. Let's wait till two weeks so Deborah can yeah. be with us. Um, I liked all the, the diversity, equity, inclusion language. Somewhere in here, I'd like to work in a little more about, um, you know, the ongoing process of dismantling systemic racism. And I want us to be careful. I see where we talk about DEI and CRESS employees that address the needs of BIPOC and other marginalized groups. Um, and yes, we certainly expect them to do that. But for me, diversity, equity, inclusion, ending systemic racism really is in everybody's interest. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't see that as something the town should do just for BIPOC people. I think living in a community that, um, you know, with all the privileges and advantages that being white has, you're still living in the midst of injustice. Uh, and I think it's in everybody's interest to have a community characterized by justice. Uh, and just, I want to, I see this committee as uh, ensuring equity for BIPOC folks for sure, but really trying to build a community where, where equity prevails and that that's a better community for everybody. So are you saying to take out um, the needs of BIPOC and other marginalized groups? No. Uh, okay. I'll, Just I'll to play. add to... Yeah, add I'll, to play the, I'll play with some language and see if I can be okay. clearer about it. Okay. It's, it's, it's not an objection. It's just a, a way to, okay. you know, to add to it. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, okay, so I think... 
Ms. Pat um, has stated that if everyone could get their comments um, in by next Wednesday. Oh, no, in two weeks, in two weeks. So in two weeks, the Wednesday, yes. the following Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um, and then can we please move and pull up Ms. Moyston the um, draft for the traffic control? Okay, so Brianna actually did um, most of the work and um, did people have time to read this? Or should I just explain? Okay, somebody said, yeah, okay. So the key takeaway from this is that we want the traffic control completely taken out of APD department. It should be part of CRES. We're also recommending that there will be no ticketing because it isn't, you know, it will, it's an incentive sometimes for APD folks who wants to punish BIPOC folks. So there will be no more incentive um, pulling people over. We do not want, um, so I know that we have a parking enforcement uh, officers right now and they're under APD. I think they should be, we think that they should be under CRAS. And we, in addition to in, um, addressing um, vehicle traffic control, we also um, would like the town to also address um, uh, pedest pedestrian safety um, as well as, you know, that are like, you know, behavior in, on the street or something to be able to have responders uh, come out. And also um, mm -hmm. enforcement of traffic, um, of, a, of, of traffic uh, violation. We don't, you know, in, instead of ticketing, we would like to see alternative to ticket, ticketing, such as uh, making donation to charities, or uh, people can volunteer um, to nonprofit organization instead of a uh, uh, paying ticket. It's what we're recommending. Whether that will fly or not, we don't know. And I think Brianna was suggesting about um, creating a pedestrian uh, safety committee, just like in Seattle. So I don't know if people have questions. And we have like, you know, you know, the use of camera is like mixed bag. You know, are they go only going to use it for traffic alone? And in, you know, what, what will be the locations to put a uh, surveillance ca uh, camera, uh, camera? And uh, we don't want the traffic control agent to be armed. They have to be completely unarmed. And um, so that's basically what it is. And then helping, you know, uh, drivers who are in need of, you know, like if you get pulled over because of brake light, obviously maybe that person doesn't have money to fix their brake light. Why give them a ticket? Why not help them? Actually, it's actually happening in Georgia, um, in a particular community where the police department over there will actually um, refer people to a place where they can get their brake light fixed instead of giving them ticket. So I would like to see that kind of model here, or maybe try to find a way to get uh, funding uh, to do that. That's it. I got cut off. What's going on? You're what still happened? here. Okay. I'm, We're still okay. here. I am? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm done. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, I, got, I, can't, I can't see what happened. That's weird. We can see you and, and we can hear you. I'm going to call on Ms. You can Smith. see me? Okay. Well, yeah. now we can't, but. That's weird. 
Um, Ms. Yeah, we, we, we can see you, Ms. Pat. I can't we can see anyone. You. What happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> that is so weird. So, okay, so um, other people can be talking because I can. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I was really excited about this um, document. Um, I want to say, you know, thanks so much for working on it. As you all know, that was one of the things that I kept on kind of putting on the list when we were um, going through kind of crest in the first part of our charge, because I didn't want that to kind of be left off. Uh, because I also agree, I also agree that um, traffic, you know, violations, traffic stops, are things where you know uh, BIPOC people get get profiled, get harassed, um, and can lead to you know a lot of trauma and harassment and and, and issues down the road. Um, you know, obviously, as we see in another parts of the country, it leads to death. Here, thankfully, it hasn't. But who knows? If things stay the same, who knows where it could lead, right? Um, so for me, that is a you know a big part of what I think needs to change. So I'm excited about all these different ideas uh, that you all you know put together on this document. Um, I think I'm I'm excited about just kind of like looking at it. I mean, I only had a little bit of time, so I want to kind of think, process it a little bit more, and then you know you know provide my feedback. One of the things that I think would be helpful, and I think you guys did it when you did in the uh, pedestrian section and then you just talked about it Miss Pat when you said in Georgia there was um, you know there's a project there that the police refer um, people to kind of get their taillight fix and everything because I'm in total agreement of that I mean why give someone a ticket you know or I'm in, t in agreement of like if you stop someone and it should be by uh, you know another group that is unarmed right if you stop someone why um, um, you know, like it, in terms of as, as opposed to a ticket where it goes to the to the APD, you know, maybe to a nonprofit or that they they volunteer themselves at a at a at a, another place. I, I'm in agreement with that too. But I think what we want to do because we saw what happened with the first part of a charge, especially with Crest, is just kind of provide if we do have it places where you know areas where data right where others have done things beforehand. And kind of provide that information in there. I think where we can provide more of that, even though some of it is going to be unique to us, and I get that, you know, but wherever we have more information that can provide more kind of support and data for why we're um, recommending this, and where, you know, other areas that have tried it and done it and it's been successful, I think, you know, would be helpful. But I'm in total support of kind of, of what you all put in this and obviously providing more feedback and massaging it some more. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Sorry, Russ, you're muted. Yeah, thank you. I think this is a really important area and I really, I love a lot of the ideas in here, but I, I agree with Deborah. I, I think we have a lot to learn from what else is being done across the country. You know, I mean, before we started even thinking about writing a CREST proposal, we spent a month or two reading articles and talking about what we'd read and what we liked about what we read and what we didn't like. And I think this is, you know, this may be more controversial and a bigger change. And I think we really need to, to do our homework. And I'd love for us to start trying to, to find articles and find accounts and share them with each other and see if we can't really dig in and, and do something very significant here. And I, I think this is a this is a great start, but I think we, we it, it's a, it's a big task, and I, we shouldn't we should we should begin immediately, but not not try to get to an end point before we've really done our research. Thank you for your comment, and I I think everything we're doing is revolutionary. It's going to be controversial, and whether it's oversight board, whether it's the Standing committee, whether it's traffic control, you know, there's going to be significant, you know, significant changes in this community. So I agree with you. The more we get backup for our recommendation, the more credible we will be. Yeah. So I, I completely agree. We need to dig in and do more research. Absolutely. 
Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. And thank you, Ms. Pat, for working on this document. Um, I also just had very briefly to, to go over it, but I think this is a great start. I think mm -hmm. it gives us a lot more to look into like Mr. Vernon Jones was saying. Um, and so I'm wondering at this point how you would like to move forward with this document. Um, if you would like for all of us to look into our own things and come back, or if that's something that you and Brianna would like to take on, or um, how we can help you, or how we can as a group move forward in developing this document, because I think there is going to be um, a little more research that has to go. Yeah. I mean, um, Brianna and myself, we can start uh, compiling, you know, uh, relevant um, articles and if people run into something please feel free to share with everyone so maybe in two or three weeks we can revisit the traffic control thing to give us enough time uh, to see what we can put together i definitely strongly feel that we have to have backup with everything that we're recommending otherwise you know we will get lots of pushback we're going to get pushback anyway in that way with what we're doing so Okay, thank you, Ms. Pat. I think I think we're in a good place with the beginning of these drafts. Um, I think at this time, these are the only drafts that we have. And so I was just wondering if we could come back to, um, are these the only subcategories that we decided people were working on? I know we also had- um, No, so it's not. The police policies and community policing. No, 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 no. So we agreed to do four uh, themes, the oversight board, the traffic control, the standing committee, and community policing. I don't think uh, anyone volunteered for the uh, community policing. So it's something that we probably need to talk about, like, are there people interested in working on this, on that? Yeah, so we, so we have community policing and police policies. And so um, I think that we should figure out how we would like to approach these topics as a group, um, just because the possibility of having a consultant is still up in the air at this time. And so until we um, receive final word on that, I would like to proceed as if we do not have a consultant. Um, and so I'm wondering, um, how everyone thinks we should approach these things, because at this point we have um, a few good drafts that we're putting off for two to three weeks. And so maybe if we could get some ideas going on these two subcategories that we can look over for next week's meeting, that that might be a good idea. I'm just not quite sure how you all would like to approach those two topics. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. As far as I can tell, the term community policing gets used in a lot of different ways by a lot of different people. And I want us to be careful about talking about the term. I, I'd rather we talk about what is it we do want and what is it we don't want. You know, we know we don't want over policing of BIPOC communities. So I think the more we can specify that, the better. But probably we all ought to do a little reading about community policing and you know what what are the different elements of it and can we pick and choose what you know can we have the things we like without having the things we don't like i know i haven't i haven't examined this thoroughly but i know there's something about it in the in the president's report on 21st century policing from the obama era i think that document is 2015 and there's something in the oh that other big thick report that we looked at when we were first starting about CRESS, but I, I don't actually know the best, the best source for it. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I think like, I think that's what I, I would want to start with would be 
Mr. Vernon Jones, if you could kind of like share again, you know, those kind of at least those two documents and stuff so that we can kind of pinpoint. And like you said, I think we all, at least for me, I know I need to kind of re-up on that and obviously look at the seventh gen report too, because I know they um, shared some information. They might have shared also some other kind of um, resources or maybe, you know, or even uh, maybe we could even follow up with what was his na um, their name? I forgot their name that did a lot of that research around community policing, just as, just in terms of just sharing resources with us, right? That we could kind of read up because that's what I would want to do is kind of read up more on it and then be able to kind of, you know, share, like to work on, on something after that, you know? Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, I am in agreement with that. So I'm wondering if for next week's meeting, if we have time, um, if you all have time to read up on, I think Terry, we do have some documents from Terry and some research um, from 7Gen already that we can just brush up on, go over. If you would like to do some independent research as well, that's fine, not required. Um, and that also in terms of the other topic, which was police policies, that maybe we might be able to identify specific policies that we would like to look into, or um, like i.e. the use of force policy, if that's something we want to start looking into specifically so that, because I don't think we'll, we'll have time unless we get an, a consultant to go over all of them. But if we can pinpoint some specific ones that we want to look into right now, that that might be something else we can discuss at next week's meeting and that we can, um, maybe have some more information on that, Mr. Vernon Jones. Sorry, Mr. Vernon Jones, you're muted. Thank you. I don't think it's exhaustive, but in that document about, uh, well, it's in the IFB that we drafted, but also in the document that I sent originally that, that uh, Jennifer pulled up first tonight about agenda items. I think there's a list of about four or five policy areas that stood out to me from our conversations and other things that I've read. Um, it's, as I say, it's not exhaustive. It may not be the most important ones, but it was some that seemed to be a particular location where racial profiling happened. Yes, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So I have the, the use of force, con, um, consent search, pretextual stops, um, police overtime. Uh, so yeah, so actually this is a pretty good list. Um, and I think that, so I'm not sure if you guys just, we want, we should do research or if we should organize, uh, Ms. Pat? So a couple of things. What I remembered, you know, I have to go back to my notes, so I don't have it on me, that I thought we only talked about community policing as topic that we're going to look into. The police policies, I feel is so broad that realistically it's a something we really want to get into or push it for the consultant to do. And I'd like to hear from Mr. Ross and uh, from Alicia at uh, the outcome of meeting with the uh, with um, Mr. Tony Delaney. Did you guys meet with him in terms of, you know, how we're moving forward with that? Sorry, thank you, Mrs. Pat. Um, so we were not able to meet with Mr. Delaney. He's uh, very busy right now, but we do have a meeting scheduled with him for tomorrow. So we should have more information for you all next week. Um, and in conversation with Mr. Bockelman, we were able to submit to Mr. Delaney some preliminary questions that we do have and some of the information that we're looking for beforehand so that hopefully he'll have those answers for us tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Pat. And yeah, so I think we did decide that the policies we would leave to the consultant group, um, but I just wasn't sure if we wanted to discuss if we are unable to retain consultants or if that is a little bit further down the road than what we had liked, if we wanted to start getting something or organizing that in a way that we can look into a bit beforehand. Um, yeah, Ms. Pat and then Mr. Vernon Jones. You know, I can't speak for other people. I'm just feeling we need to really be careful as to what we can or cannot handle. I think, um, you know, community policing, we work on and other, other three sub 
uh, groups that we're working on. Let's do a thorough job on that very well. If we get consultants to do the uh, policies, I just, I don't know, I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed already. So, you know, use of police alone will take a lot. What does that mean? It means different things to different people. People will say, yeah, police have not killed anybody in Amherst. But that's not how some people say it. You know, you don't have to kill somebody to use uh, use of uh, force, for example. You know, consent, you know, I, I just look at, at this stuff like, it would take forever for us to like pull it together doing researches, research to back up our recommendation or what, our findings. It would take a lot. I'm, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, we're stretching ourselves thin right now. Thank you. Um, for, uh, also, our workload, we all have, you know, have in our regular jobs, uh, whether we, you know, we work, you know, we stay home, uh, taking care of our families, that's a lot of, you know, it's a more than full-time job, you know, for some people who work out of, outside the home. We have to be realistic, please. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I certainly agree with Ms. Pat that we don't want to overcommit ourselves or drive ourselves into the ground. Um, and even if we get a consultant, we're going to need to give them some guidance about what kinds of policies is it that we want them to research. I mean, they, yeah. you know, there <laughs> must pro probably thousands or at least certainly hundreds of policies in the police department. Um, this list was, uh, for me, was the, the ones that I've read about or heard about being particular locations of racism being enacted, uh, depending on what the policy was. And I thought even if, even if we're going to have a consultant, it'd be, it'd be great if we could identify where we want, where that we want the policy to look, the, the consultant to look at policies. Use of force, there is a, what I think is a, a quite strong model policy produced by Campaign Zero. Uh, they give you all the language and everything uh, that I think, you know, has, you know, it doesn't answer everything, and of course, but it's a, a strong model that's been looked at by a whole lot of people and gone through a lot of revisions, and that, that might be all we, we want them to do on that. But yeah, let's not let's not commit to doing all this. But let's, if we can, develop a list of what we would want a consultant to do. That might be helpful. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's what I would think too. It's just kind of like I know that obviously it's, it's just a lot of work and short amount of time. Uh, but for me, like, for instance, when I look at this list, yeah, it does look overwhelming. But I think, like, for me, like, top ones, for me anyway, would be, like, use of force, consent searches, pretextual stops, anti-bias, and how to proactively uh, practice anti-racism and the training. You know, for me anyway, you know, those would be the top ones, you know. So I think if we just kind of, like, maybe look at, you know, kind of put a top five or something like that, um, and might not look as daunting. And then, you know, even when a, a consultant comes on board, maybe prioritize those, right? If you do a top five or prioritize, this would be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth to go into, then it, it might seem more manageable to kind of take on. Thank I, you. Yeah, yes, Ms. Pat? I honestly feel that we should not be, you know, um, discussing training for APD. You know, they're doing training. Training doesn't change anything. I don't think we should be, you know, um, doing that. That's just my opinion. It has not changed anything. There is funding for them to do training. So. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, but remember, Ms. Pat, I mean, for me, I really think though we, we have to focus on training because there's still gonna be APDs. Like they're still going to be the police there. They're still going to be dealing with violent, um, you know, crime and stuff. Unless we get rid of APD in its totality, right? And that's not that hasn't been our recommendation. Our, our recommendation has been to kind of decrease some, um, 
you know, you know, take away obviously a lot of them in terms of, of doing what Crest is going to be doing. And obviously if we transform the traffic violations and we take that away, it will limit them, but it still doesn't get rid of all of the APD unless I'm wrong, right? So if there's still going to be APD there, we need to make sure that whoever's in there is going to be people, you know, hopefully some BIPOC people, you know, in terms of diversity. So they're hiring practices and also that they are trained. I, I hear you because, you know, training isn't obviously the ultimate effectiveness, but I think we could do more in terms of the type of training, who's providing their training. Because a lot of times they're just bringing run of the mill people in there. You know, they're not bringing someone like a seventh gen or like, you know, canopy, let's say, or other folks that we know that are gonna bring in try, tried and true type of things. And they're not doing long-term stuff. You know, they're doing the one and done, check off the box, boop. You know, that's not gonna do anything, but if you're kind of working with them on a long-term, you know, we, we need to try something. Cause if we just leave them to their own, uh, uh, own, um, um, kind of ideas and their own training, the ones that are there that are going to be responding to violent crime are still going to be doing things that we don't want them to do. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Pat. So what I'm trying to say is that whether or not we recommend training, there is always budget in APD that does training. Do I really want to spend my time discussing recommending procedures? How are we sure that they're going to uh, implement our recommendation? The question we need to ask ourselves, is it us that we that's supposed to do this or is it the oversight board that could come up with the recommendations? We have a lot on our plate. We need to prioritize you know, what we can or cannot do. You know, police officers are constantly being trained. That is budget for that is required for them to do it. Um, so it's just the timing. Do we have enough time to spend on procedures of training? Is it something we need the oversight board to do? I'm not, I'm not against, you know, police training. They're going to do it whether, you know, whether we like it or not, that will always be trained. Uh, I looked at the cu uh, current budget, fiscal year. They have, you know, good amount of money for training. Do we, you know, but I'm, I'm not thrilled that we're going to be spending time discussing procedure for, for, for uh, training for police. When we have other um, matters, um, topics that we should be working on, is my point. If we if this is like one year project, yes, I said let's let's give them you know recommendation for procedures for training, but we don't have enough time. We really don't have enough time. We have to be realistic what we're putting on our plates to do. Thank you, Miss Pat, uh, Miss Ferreira, and then Miss Bowman. Yeah, I mean I agree with you, Miss Pat. I mean I, you know I think what we landed on is that this should be a list for. Um, the consultants, you know, if we get consultants, if it's us, yeah, I, I think we're going to run out of time. We're not going to be able to do it. But I hear you in terms of them having funding. But remember, whatever they, they've been using their funding to just bring in kind of run of the mill trainers, you know, I mean, the type of trainers, the, the type of, um, you know, how intense and how long you work with, with, with people, it makes a difference. It might not get us to the end point we want them to get because obviously, you know, that that's something different. Sometimes when people are already ingrained in the way that they are, they're going to stay that way and training's not going to change them. But I think to, to leave them to their own devices where they, just, they have the funding and so they're bringing in whomever just to check off a box, that's not good too, you know? It's not what so, I'm saying. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's not but that's, you know, but I, I'm just saying in terms of like when, when you're saying, well, I guess then I don't know what you're saying. I guess I'm, I don't yeah. know. What I'm then yeah, yeah if you it's can not, clarify It's not what that. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm, what I'm saying is that do we have enough time to actually spend trying to come up with procedures of you know the you know the right training for for police? Is what I'm saying. You know, is it our board? Is it our group that that should be doing that when we have other topics to to discuss? Should we leave it for the oversight board or to the consultant? Can I just say something? For the sake of time, is where I'm coming from. For the sake of time. I just, I just need to excuse myself for a moment and, and I'm going to shut my camera off, but I won't be here. 
Okay, thank you. And yes, I've, um, proceed, Ms. Bowman. Um, so I, I don't think that that's what Ms. Fiera was saying. I think what, she, I think the recommendations were like, okay, these are the top, top, say five things that we want the oversight board to be aware of and to be figuring out how to address um, as part of their charge. I don't think she's necessarily saying it's part of our charge. I think she's saying the details are part of their charge, but I think we need to come up with a couple things that very much affect the BIPOC community, like, you know, um, you know, what their policies are for, you know, trainings and who they're getting to train. I think that's something that the oversight board should be, <clears throat> or the or Crest or whatever should be, they should be made, making the recommendations like, okay, one of the things that the CSWG wants us to look at is who is doing your training. So now we're gonna look at who is doing your training and we're gonna re recommend somebody else to do your trainings because whoever's doing your trainings right now is not doing the job that needs to be done for this community community for this time and eight and time of day or whatever. I don't think that it, all the details are there. So I don't think what Ms. Fiera is asking or, or mentioning is putting too much more on our plate. I think it's just a matter of saying, hey, these top five things are really important. And maybe we can look at more down the line or maybe the Crest program can look at more down the line, but we want them to address these things first. We want a trainings to be addressed and who's gonna be doing the training. We need that, need that addressed now. We need, you know, and along with training goes with the history because I've talked about history many, many, many times about how a lot of these officers don't even understand the backstory of policing. Like they were slave catchers. That's what police did. They caught slaves to return to masters. That's what the job was. Um, by any means, like dead or alive a lot of times, you know? Um, and so I think that there's, there's definitely, uh, I think there is a list that needs to go and be passed on. I just don't know if that, like, yeah, I just don't, I, I don't think that that should be something that just gets put on, just given to this other board. I think that we need to, we need to, because these are things that, directly affect communities of color. So I think we do need to say, hey, we need you guys to look at these and make good recommendations as far as how to handle these situations before they happen, like proactively, you know? So that's, I, I and, and if I'm totally off bat, Ms. Fear, just tell me, cause I, that's just what I was hearing. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, Ms. Fair and then Ms. Pat. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I was saying was that the consultant, that's the only change, was the consultant or, yeah, I'm fine with uh, getting it to the oversight board too. I don't have a problem with that. But yeah, but I think we do need to identify. So I, am, I agree with what Ms. Bowman was saying. We do need to identify it. We do need to kind of state it because it, it's important, especially around the, the type of training they're getting because the training they've been getting has been terrible and it hasn't changed. So. I think we, even if it's the hand it off to either consultant or the oversight board, whatever you all decide, I'm fine with, but we do need to identify those. It doesn't have to be us dealing with it, but we need to identify it. If I may, I know perhaps some of the training that APD have been having, maybe some of them are not that great, but I also am aware, all of us are aware that, um, they've also received training from very, you know, good trainers and no change. Mr. Ross Benningers have, you know, been a consultant to APD and there's no change. So, I mean, I'm all for like, you know, training um, officers, even if it's seven gen training them, they're not going to change. It's not going to change is what I'm saying. But yeah, I'm not going to label the issue, but you know, it's not, they're not going to change. It doesn't matter who, who, who delivers it. I'm very convinced about that. We can agree to disagree, everybody, you know? Yeah, it, it, you know, and I hear you, Ms. Pat. I mean, my thing is, you know, with the ones that are left there that aren't gonna be taken over by Crest or are, aren't gonna be replaced by this traffic control group, you know, whoever's gonna be 
you know, we, we still need to do what we can, make those recommendations, right? Um, to put the pressure, right? That they get the right training. And even, and I don't know what Mr. Rosman and Jones did, because I know obviously whatever he did, he's, he's a good trainer, but it has mm -hmm. to be long-term. It can't be a, a, one and, a one and done or even a weekend or one week, because that's a lot of the training that happens. And I know some of the other, I, I have other, you know, uh, colleagues that have done some training with APD, but it's kind of like one eight hour day. It can't be that, you know what I'm saying? It has to be long term. And, you know, for me, if they're going to be there, we need to ensure that they get at least, you know, long term training by good people that are anti anti racist, anti white supremacist, you know, that are going to be there teaching them because I, I think a lot of them they're only getting how how can we be diverse how can we be inclusive like nicey nicey no we need to deal with how can you stop being about white dominance you know uh you know whiteness uh dealing with their white privilege how can you be actively anti-racist not white supremacist i mean we need to be it, it needs to be that type of training you know and i don't think they've gotten that <laughs> yet or oh, if they is have that true? They got, is that true Ross? Or if they did they got it like maybe a couple of you know like for a day or two and that's not going to do anything i'm sorry it won't thank you miss pat and miss ferreira and mr vernon jones i have done no training with the Amherst Police Department. Oh, okay. okay. I have never had an opportunity to do training okay. with the Amherst Police Department. There was a time about three years ago when Sid Ferreira and Barbara Love and I had a conversation with the chief about okay. doing the kind of training Deborah is talking okay. about. But okay. the chief never took us up on it, and I've never okay. had any opportunity whatsoever to work with them. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. Thank you for. for Clearing yeah. that up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah. Thank you. I don't claim that my training works magic anyway, but you know, I, I never got a chance to try with the department. Oh, but you had the conversation. I think that's what it is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Miss Bowman has her hand up, and then if I might make a comment. Unmute. Okay, I'm unmuted. There you go. Um <laughs> <laughs> so um And maybe Mr. Vernon Jones will be able to back me up on this. But um, when you're doing work, when it comes, when you're doing work when it comes to racism, and when you're doing work when it comes to um, being conscious of, you know, your of systemic racism and so on and so forth, that work is definitely a daily job. And <coughs> excuse me. It takes a while to start learning to hold yourself accountable on a regular basis of things that are um, causing strife in other people's life that is not, um, that is not, you know, it's not acceptable. Um, so I say this to say that, um, I think it's important to remember that when the when trying to make when we're trying to make rec recommendations or when we're trying to um, point out certain things like trainings is that um, like Ms. Pierre said, like you can't do a you can't do an eight hour training and think you're going to undo all the racism that you ever you know you ever participated in there out there in the world. You have to do, you have to have daily recognitions. You have to understand microaggressions. You have to understand, um, you know, words. You have to understand words in a way that you may not have understood before. Um, Cause wording also, there's a lot of things, you know, with wording, God, TikTok has taught me so much, <laughs> but um, you know, there are things that like we don't we don't think about that we use in our everyday language that are very very racially charged and really really messed up, um, and so it's daily work and and it's like how are we gonna hold or how are we gonna teach? It is important for us to find a, a trainer or help 
encourage Amherst Police Department to find trainers that are very versed in um, systemic racism and how it works into our everyday lives and how it works into a police officer's everyday life because it's gonna work a little differently into their life um, because of their the role, the power dynamic that they play. So that's like, if we're looking for something, that's something that we would, I would say that we'd need to, we would need to look for, we would need to put as part of the charge for, for Crest to look for, to be like, hey, you know, here's a list of trainers that are, who train police officers who are very versatile in systemic racism and how that plays out in the police force. You know, who are you looking at? Why are you looking at them? What's causing you to look at this person versus this person? What's causing you to give this person a break versus this person? That stuff is really, really important. And the thing is, is that, Miss Pat, I understand that you're like, it's not gonna work. And no, it doesn't because we keep doing these small little like workshoppy, like, oh, one day hit it and quit it type things. What we need to be telling Cress is that they need to find something that's sustainable. This person is part of the organization. This person is part of this and is daily holding people accountable, looking over people's police reports and being like, okay, here's where you are showing your racist behavior. Here's where you're showing systemic racism because in this police support, this is report, this is what you said. This is how you describe this person or this is how, you know, or this is how you approach the situation, but how could you have handled it differently that's that's accountability that's holding people accountable and there needs somebody there needs to be somebody in that building that's holding other officers accountable hey um so there were 17 parties you only arrested the people at the party that was predominantly people of color can you explain that to me what made you do that what made this party so much different than this other party Oh, that's interesting because we got six rape charges from this party, but we didn't get any rape charge, you know, rape charges from this party. Things like that. You know, so it's and it, and that's just that's just because I live in Amherst and have dealt with UMass and all their crap. But you know, but but I think you understand where I'm going, is that this needs this this <clears throat> excuse my child. That was my child who just did that. Get away from me, please. I'm on this call right now. Um, but that was recorded. They can't see you. Go away. Um, but yeah, so I think you guys get where I'm kind of going with this. Like, we can't just give a charge of like, oh, you should, you should recommend training. No, you should recommend somebody to be hired on the department who is trained in A, B, C, and D, who is there to help hold accountable uh, officers accountable, kind of like indefinitely at some point we would hope that their job kind, kind of becomes obsolete because account, officers are starting to hold themselves accountable and they're training their young they're training incoming rookies to hold themselves accountable okay stop talking now thank you miss bowman um, i can defer my comment until after miss moiston I was just going to say something very similar and I just didn't know if I had missed that piece when I stepped away for a moment that, you know, instead of one of the things that they could do instead of hiring anybody if that's their plan or not or just add to their budget is to hire someone who's a trainer who just is a police, I don't know if there's one that's a police officer, but someone who's going to be there in this to do exactly what Tashina has just suggested. Um, it's very, the things that happen sometimes throughout town, every department's culture is different. Every building's culture is different here. And the things that, this didn't happen at PD, but it happens in another department where somebody had said something like, oh, shut up, you're lazy. But they said it and they said, well, that's what I say to everybody, but they don't understand. You can't necessarily say that to everybody, right? Because everybody takes it differently. So you need someone who kind of gets and understands that, or has familiarity with the culture that's in there to help best be able to um, to stop it. And the best way to do that is to have someone inside of the department. And so I think that Tashina had very valid points in saying that they, they just need to hire an on-site trainer. Lots of places do it. Like that person's there to do exactly what she said. 
would that be the role of DEI director? I, so, you know, I would say for any other department, yes, but the PD is, it's, it's, I mean, we're, CSWG is specific, and I would say that you need to put it as a recommendation is, was my key point, was that that should be the recommendation is that they have a trainer on site. And your DEI director is not going to be able to focus so much on the PD to that degree. You need somebody who's going to be in there, right? The, um, there's so much work to be done across the board here when it comes to DEI work, right? Um, and all the departments and all of the town buildings and all the town spaces, but the PD needs its own and the strength of that of look at, we're trying to reform it to a different degree than we are everyone else. Like we don't have, we have issues where, where microaggressions and implicit biases affect the people that come into our town spaces, but the ones that happen at the PD level are just hit our community in a different way than coming into town hall and you know they're just give you attitude right that's one thing but going and being harassed by a police officer being retaliated by a police officer is on a whole other level so if you have somebody that's kind of in there and i would you know that's a great idea for a recommendation to kind of help with that training because i will say that deborah is right you can't just do a training once or once a year or twice a year or three times a year and i agree with tashina it's like our we're the american way is so embedded into that white space that it no they can't see any other way like i do a a, a simple fundamental training here with all the staff and the hardest thing for everybody to get over is the fact that we're in white space right so it's it's they need someone who can just work with them, I would say. Thank you, Ms. Moisen. Um, yeah, so I just want to say I, I agree with that comment and um, Ms. Bowman's comment that I actually think that's a great idea as one of the recommendations because looking at your own biases and being able to address those in, in yourselves and then therefore in your work is an ongoing task that needs to be done throughout the day, every single day. Um, and needs to be constantly reviewed by yourself. And that takes a lot of accountability and knowledge, which they may not have. And so therefore would need somebody else to be able to do that. And so I think that that is a good recommendation to have somebody on site who that is their specific job. Um, but what I wanted to speak to just in terms of the training, um, I do see Mrs. Pat's um, suggestion that in lieu of time, we not dive deep into that. And I, I think we can do a combination of things in like numbering them and then setting them aside to if the consultant group, if we are able to ret retain consultants and that they have time that they can look into the, these things and that then if they don't have time or we don't get a consulting group that then these are the five that we pass down to the resident oversight board and ask them to review it. Um, and in terms of thinking that training should be one of those things, I also do agree that training hasn't proven to do anything or to be effective at all in the past, but that if we were, if we had the ability to, because there are a set of trainings that are required, right? And so if there's any discretion or any ability to change the required trainings that all officers re receive, or if they could say like, uh, they have two uh, trainings to choose from, and this is the one that they give, maybe the other one would have been better, that those are some suggestions and recommendations that then they can make in regards to training, and not necessarily that they would, would suggest more training, um, but that it would be within the training that is already budgeted for in the police department. That was how I was thinking about it, and but that I am in agreement that that's not something that we should really focus on unless we have the time to. Um, so I'm wondering if everyone is okay with Deborah's suggestion in terms of numbering the policies that Mr. Vernon Jones said, but that then just setting them aside until we either have consultants or until we have the time after we have completed the other um, major topics that we are working on right now. Yes, Ms. Pat? I would suggest that maybe next month, but for us to focus on the three um, topics that we're working on and also researching on community policing. And then maybe, you know, towards the end of uh, August, then we figure out where we are at to see if we can take on 
the five uh, popular topics from the list that uh, Mr. Ross has listed. I'm not opposed to any of them. I'm just worried that I'm already sensing fatigue on some people. So um, we're all human beings. So we have other lives too. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree that we ought to focus on these things that we've identified, including community policing. Um, and that, yes, we may need to pick five at some point or not, but I wouldn't try to pick five now. I mean, the work we do over the next month may change our minds about what we think is, is most important. Let's just leave the list sit there. Yeah. Well, if anybody gets any ideas, you can add to it. Um, and if we get time to work on it, we can pick our top five then, I would be my recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I just don't want it to, to, to leave off the list though. You know, I just think that if we put it down by the end of August and then what if we don't revisit it again? So I just think that we need to make sure we put it on the list so that it doesn't fall off the list because we are gonna be very busy. Because I still think that it is important for us to uh, enumerate this list, whether it's for um, the consultant or the oversight board, it's gonna be key for us to put in some of that information. I just don't want it to be fall through the cracks. Maybe the energy will be different after summer. It's just, it's, it, it, what comes with summer? Maybe September people will be feeling, oh, back to normal routine and, you know, maybe, was, you know, the energy will be different, but yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer, Ms. Pat. Um, so I'm in agreement. I think that's okay to put it aside for now, but we will um, come back to it, Ms. Ferreira. Um, I will make sure to keep that in the front of my thinking. Um, and so with that, I would like to move to the next part of our agenda. Um, well, we oh, no, I thought you were going to adjourn. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> Sorry, so I was going to say that this, the last item is feedback from part one. I'm, I don't think, unless anyone else has the need to discuss that right now, that that's something that we need to talk about right this minute. Um, however, yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, I was hoping we would have at least a brief conversation about the email from Brianna oh. about the um, situation with Herb Rhodes. Yes, so I did have um, the audience, by the way. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. I just I did have three small topics. That was one of them that I wanted to bring up in things that we did not anticipate within 24 hours of the meeting. Um, so that segues perfectly. And that was the first thing that I. Nope, you just went mute. Sorry, thank you. Um, so I know that Brianna was able to forward you all um, email communication from uh, Mr. Rhodes, who is interested in having a meeting with us. And so I wanted to um, gauge the, the interest of the group or uh, feedback in terms of that, if you all had time to read that email um, to know how you would like for us to move forward. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I would say like, cause uh, when I read that, um, uh, Brianna said that if we do decide to meet with Mr. Rhodes, it would, it would be good to just kind of meet with him, um, you know, not to take up our meeting to meet with him. Um, I think that I would be more in agreement with that. And it doesn't have to be all group. Cause obviously if it's all of us, then we'd have to post it and it would be a public meeting. <laughs> so I think, you know, maybe two people, you know, meet with him, you know, I'm fine with that, you know, that would be my opinion and not to take up a meeting because we have too much other work to get to. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Pat. So I will agree with Brianna about not doing it during our regular meeting because we have so much to cover. But um, I think as many, many, and many members who can make it, maybe setting up an hour meeting. It cannot be more than an hour meeting. Um, I would like to be a part of that meeting because I know I was the one who started the conversation. So I do agree that we, you know, if he's inviting to meet, 
with our group, uh, Brianna and any other person that Brianna cho chooses, I think, you know, we should honor that. That's part of, you know, we're doing public service. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. Oh, and sorry, Ms. Bowman. Um, I also see your hand up after Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, we can have three members meet with each other or with her without any violation of the open meeting law. And I think I would recommend that, that we have three people. Uh, but for me, it's not just a matter of how much work we do. It's also, I think it's the kind of conversation that is better held not in a open public meeting. Uh, to have a chance to you know, go back and forth and try to come to uh, at least an understanding of each other's positions, if not to agreement. Um, Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Bowman, did you um, still have a comment you wanted to make? <clears throat> yeah. Um, so I'm going to be the Debbie Downer in this whole thing. I don't think we should meet with them. I don't think we should meet with him because we have a lot of other work to do. I don't think we should meet with him because he had an opportunity to come and meet with us or come talk to us before he went in a public, in a public space and trash us. Trash the work that we've been doing with not, with not having any real interaction with any of us. So I don't think we owe him anything. And I think that by us meeting with him, we are wasting valuable time taking care of the things that we're left to take care of when we are on a, we're on a time clock. Um, he's had plenty of opportunity that he could have come and he could have talked to us and he could have reached out to us and he could have done it in, in, in a private matter as, as on top of it. So now he's forcing our hand, our hand to have a private conversation with him because reality is, is that if we have to, if we wanna have, if, if we want the whole group involved that it has to be a public conversation. And I just, for me, it just, it does not feel, it feels, it feels, it does not feel good. It gives me a bad taste in my gut, or a bad feeling in my gut, does not feel good because you want it, he wanted to be public with us. And now he's coming, we're at the end of coming towards the end of our, our thing. And we're, we're already rushing as it is in a lot of ways to get certain things out there and certain things done. And now we're being interrupted to have this conversation with this person who couldn't even have the decency to talk to us privately. He had to put us on blast to other, other boards in this town other committees in this town with his disdain. I am not for this at all. I am not for wasting our time with this person. He had plenty of time to come to us and he didn't, he decided to blast us and then be like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll have a conversation with you. Come on, seriously, we got other stuff that we need to take care of. And if he does, if we are gonna sit and talk with him, I think it should be in a public, in a public space. I really do, because I think it's very important for it not to be behind closed doors. I think it's very important because you, uh, it's just, it goes again to one of these things where it's like, well, yeah, I know he did it to us publicly, but we don't have to go back and do, you know what? Sometimes it needs to happen in a public place. It needs to happen in, in, in a place where it's like, people can hear our arguments. People can hear what we're defending ourselves against because he did not allow that really for us when he put those letter, when he put that letter out there. He didn't allow that. He put his opinion out there and, and trashed us in the way he trashed us. And then was like, you know, and it did not back us and did not want to hear our voices before he went and trashed us really to a bunch of white people. Cause that's what happens. And I'm sorry if you like, I know I might be like upsetting people, but that's exactly what happened. He trashed us to a bunch of white people who do not have our best interests in their hands. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. I think I saw Ms. Pat and then Ms. Ferreira. So um, I hear what you're saying, Tashina, and I, 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 I get your perspective, Mr. Ross. We should all remember that uh, we're a public body group, meaning we're bound by open meeting law. 
So Mr. Mr. Rowe, you know, the letter that he, the email that he sent was public record that was sent to um, some members of the town council and the town manager. Um, I think because we serve, this is a public service, we serve the community and we have a community member who we may not agree with. I think we should offer her that courtesy to, you know, if he really wants to meet with us, but I will not support private meeting at all. I kind of agree with Tashina that it should be a public meeting and let's hear him out. You know, who knows, you know, um, we may not, you know, we may agree to disagree, but the, he's reaching out. He wants to talk more. He wants to probably explain himself where he's coming from. And it would be an opportunity for, to have a dialogue. So I'm all for that. Perhaps what I would like to suggest is maybe get a neutral person to facilitate the meeting because he feels that CSWJ attacked him. So I think it would be good to have somebody to facilitate the meeting, you know, when we set the time, and I hope it will be convenient for him. Uh, uh, perhaps maybe Ms. Moistin can facilitate the meeting or something like that. Uh, I don't know whether he included you as, you know, uh, part of the people who were upset with him, but I, I am pushing for public uh, meeting with him. We should meet with him and it should be public. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. So, um, you know, I agree with, you know, Ms. Bowman in terms of like, you know, we have a lot of work, right, to do. Um, so for me, I, I'm, I'm good with whatever you all want to do, right? Um, if you all want to meet with them and maybe we need to take a vote, um, then I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But if you don't want to meet with them, I'm okay with that too, because we have a lot of work, right? I, I feel like the ship has sailed mm -hmm. and we've already provided, I'm sorry, we've already provided a lot of a lot of public, we, we responded to him publicly. You all have met with him. <laughs> I mean, there's been already a lot of time taken with Mr. Rhodes. It's not as if we haven't responded plenty of time uh, to a lot of his, uh, a lot of what he said. The only time we didn't respond back was that second email that he sent. But then Ms. Ms. Walker and, and Ms. Ms. Owen met with them, you know? So I'm good either way, but, and I'm fine with, Ms. Bowman did make me switch my mind in terms of, I guess, if we do decide to be, meet with them, she made me switch my mind to think that, yes, let's meet with them publicly. I'm fine with that, you know? So uh, the will of the group, but if you all don't want to meet with them, I'm good with it too. Cause I, I have, you know, my time is precious and we have short amount of time to get a lot of work done and we've responded quite adequately to Mr. Rhodes in writing. And then you all met with him too. And I know he's reached out to me, you know, and I know I'm gonna be talking to him when I come, come back from the vacation and stuff like that. So it, it's time and time and time and time, you know, um, which I think could have all been dealt with if he had just reached out to us before he sent that email, you know, which he didn't do. Um, so in that way, uh, I'm not happy with that. You know, I'm not happy with the, the, the way things went, went down the path, the divisiveness that he caused and, and the fact that we've had to spend all this time over and over again, taken out of, of our, our, of the little time that we have to do, because now here we go, we're spending another 15 minutes over the time of when we're supposed to be done to discuss Mr. Rhodes. So anyway, I think we should take it to a vote and let's move on. I think we lost. I, I, I think we lost our, our fearless leader. Oh no! Are we dead? Okay. But I, I can we don't. Alicia. Kind of... Nah, she ain't. We no lost one. you. We lost her. No, she's not. But can she's we kind of decide, like, because there's four of us, like, whether we want to have the meeting or not, and then. And then kind of I, I think we should table it to next week because there's only are we do we have quorum? Yeah, we have yes. a quorum. Oh, so we're four people. What do you guys suggest? Hi. I'm I'm for public um meeting with him. So I think um I think Tashina is too. No, I'm not I'm not. I'm for 
not meeting with him at well, all. Not but meeting with him. Okay. I didn't want to meet with him. We've given him enough of our attention. If we do, like if everybody else decides they want to meet with him, then the only way that I will be for it is if it's in a public setting. That's I got it. you. I got you. Mr. Jones, uh, Vernon Jones, what do you think? I don't know. I, you know, Alicia has been leading us all night. She introduced this topic. I, I'm kind of reluctant to, I mean, I plan to abstain for this decision, but I'm kind of reluctant to have it made without Alicia having a chance to say her. Oh, she's been, what happened? <laughs> Ms. Walker, can you hear Sorry, us? Sorry, I'm happy. Oh, she's freezing. Frozen. Do you want to take out your video and see if that helps? Aww. <laughs> Poor Lisa. Maybe then let's table it. Booting me off of my internet. Why don't you remove your video? Wait, can you hear us better now? Is it removed? Um, yeah, the video you know. the videos Sorry. removed. So, Ms. Walker, what we are talking about was just kind of getting a sense from the group in terms of whether to meet with Mr. Rhodes or not. And and I think we're all on the same page that if we do meet with no, him, we'll meet I think I'm still not having great connection here. All right, but we can't hear you though. Yeah, but Miss Pat, I think it's delayed for her. It's what? Delayed. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got you. So who wants to facilitate the rest of the meeting in her absence? Well, what I else do we have in our agenda? Hi, sorry, can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Can you yes. hear us? Sorry, I can hear you guys. It's we can't hear you. Sandy, yeah. don't do that. Alicia, could you call one of us on the phone and do this by speakerphone? Your voice keeps breaking up. And you're muted right now. That be agreeable if I try to call her and see if we can have her do it by speakerphone? Yes, please. <laughs> Benji, stop. Benji, leave the room now. Hello, sorry. Hi, Alicia, you're on speaker now. Um, Hi, I'm sorry. My internet, my, my modem actually just, I had to restart it. Um, so I was booted off of my Wi-Fi for a minute, but I, and I was waiting for it to restart and I actually think it might be on now. So I'm going to try one more time to open my Zoom because I think, I think I'm connected with better connection now. Give me just one second. Go tell, go tell your brother that Chili's done. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I think I might be good now. My modem just shut off and I had to restart it and I think it took a minute to pick back up the signal. Um, so I apologize, I got lost. Um, we were talking about possibly having to do a vote. I don't know if I missed something after that. That's it. Okay. That's it. Well, we started, well, we actually started kind of getting an idea, but yeah, can we just do a vote so we can kind of move on from this and decide whether we're going to meet with them or not? So the first part of the vote would be, do we want to meet with him or not? So that would be the first piece. Well, if we of could it. also decide whether or not we want it. You, you muted yourself again. Sorry. Um, so, and if it's possible, I was wondering if we could also decide whether or not we want this meeting to be um, a publicly recorded meeting or a private meeting. Mm -hmm. So if, if we public. do decide to have a meeting. So we, uh, so I think we pretty much have said public at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think the real question is whether or not we actually are willing to meet with him. Um, 
-hmm. My vote is no. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, so do we, ha we do a roll call for a vote? Miss mm -hmm. Marston. Sorry, do I need to do a, I, I do a roll call for a vote. Okay, um, Mr. Vernon Jones. I will abstain. Um, Ms. Pat. Yes, with him. Ms. Ferreira. No. Um, and then myself, and I don't mean to make this complicated, but I was going to, and I'm still going to vote yes. So we're tied. Is Mr. Cage no. around? No. Oh no. <laughs> so we're, let's bring the vote back next week. How about that? Okay, yeah, I think, cause I think Ms. Owen um, and Mr. Cage will hopefully be present and, and we can retry to vote next week. I think I'm okay with that if that's okay with the group as well. If I may suggest after the public comment, if we can just like not have too much discussion, just do the vote right away, get it out of the way in case we, we don't lose, you know, before losing people. Okay, th um, thank you, Ms. Pat. Well, as you all know, I won't be at, at next week's meeting, so you have my vote though. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that a good thing for us? <laughs> I mean, it is my vote. I mean, what I can do is I'll, I'll process it. You know, maybe I, 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 did, I doubt it, but my vote is a no as of right now. If I don't change it, that's what it stays. I'm not, and then I won't be at the meeting next week because I'm traveling back during that time. I can't meet. So, if, if you are, if you're not in the, if you're not in person, we won't count your vote, right? That's oh, the way it that's works. that's what you want, Miss Pat. <laughs> with that too i don't care i i said if you all want to meet with mr rhodes i'm fine to meet with him I, you know but my vote would be no <laughs> anyway have a good safe trip back home <laughs> <laughs> thank you Ms. Ferreira. um and so sorry there were just two other quick things i wanted to touch on before the end of this meeting um and they were one to just let you all know i wasn't sure if i remembered to let you all know last week that the amherst indy had posted our letter of appreciation um, so that is up um, for everyone to view. And also then I just wanted to bring up that there has been communication or um, that Sunrise is hosting a budget rally this Saturday and they were looking to see if the CSWG would be interested or available to speak at the rally. Um, however, Brianna and I are both um, have other obligations. And so I didn't know if anybody else would be interested in doing that or if we should just um, decide that we are unavailable to attend the event. What's the date? Um, so it's this Saturday. And I, sorry, but I don't have the time right in front of me. Oh, yeah. I have it. Thank you, Ms. Winston. Just because they had to put a request out. So the event is from, it looks like two to four. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones, did you have your hands up? My, my recollection from what I read of it is that they, the purpose of their meeting is to advocate for the cutting the police budget uh, in order to fund the schools. Um, and if that's correct, I wasn't sure whether we have a position on that. We're in favor of cutting the police budget, but we were recommending the money go into our recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, yes, yeah, so I am unsure um, if this is something that you all would like to have um, CSWG presence at, or they did ask though, if we wanted to speak. Yeah, I mean, as you all know, I mean, I can't, I can't be at it. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if, I, I don't know if we're contrary to them though. You know, I hear you, what you said, Mr. Vernon Jones, yeah. but obviously, obviously, you know, um, cutting the police budget I think cutting the police budget is just a good idea. And then, you know, as much money we have, we spread, we spread it out, right? We spread it to okay. us, we spread it to fund the schools because God knows we know our schools need it and everything. So I think we could be in support of it, but I, I just don't, 
I mean, I know I'm not available, obviously being out here in West Africa and I'm not sure if other people are available or not. And if we, we're we not available, we won't be able to be there, you know? That would be I would back Deborah's position, but I'm not available to speak. Thank you, Ms. Pat. So I plan to attend, but I'm, I don't, I don't want to speak. Okay, thank you. Um, so I will just respond um, if that's okay and just say that we're appreciative of their request. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to say that we are in, we support them or just to thank you for inviting us and unfortunately we're unavailable to attend. I would no, 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 no. We we're attending. We're supporting. We're attending, but Good. Let's are you going, Mr. Ross? Are you going? No, I, I can't, but I, okay. I support them for sure. Okay, yeah. great. I think, so I, I, yeah, I think we want to say we're supportive. It's just that we're not available to speak. You know, I mean, Miss 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 Pat is is attending, but we we, we don't. I have, I hope so. Anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, we okay. don't have anything to say right now in terms of you know being available to kind of speak on it, but we're supportive. Yeah. Of their okay. Mission. Great. So I will respond to them and let them know. Um, that although that we cannot speak, that there will be possibly some CSWG members in attendance and that they have our support. Yes. Okay, um, thank you all. So with that being said, unless anybody else has any um, topics that, um, Ms. Nope. Morrison. <laughs> I'm like, it's like a probably a minute's worth. So I keep having this individual Nizia Blackshear, the Amherst Hadley reporter, the reminder reaching out and they're reaching out directly to me and I, I told them to reach out to you guys, but they sent the email to the community safety working group. So I don't know if anybody else saw that or responded, but I don't, I'm not going to speak to them. So you guys will need to follow up with that as opposed to me, even though he's sending it saying, dear Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Moisa. Mr. Vernon Jones. I wrote to them today saying that our group had a policy that the co-chairs would be the ones that we Perfect. Could and sent them the names of the two co-chairs. I'd said the similar. Thank you. Um, my other two pitches, not to be like egomaniac or anything. Um, A, I'll be on CNN tomorrow night at 10 p.m. on the Yay! Don Ooh. Lehman Ooh. show. That's big. And, and I don't really know, like it was kind of like a setup. I just, I was asked to walk them over to see the plaques. And as we walked over, I went over the whole story and history of the plaques. And then we got in there and he saw him and he turned and he looked and he was like, you got to do an interview. And I was like, oh my God. What do you mean? <laughs> and so I, <laughs> it's probably like a 20 I have no idea what it's like. I don't know what he used out of it, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. Watch and a party. I would like to have a watch party tomorrow night. Where? What location? <laughs> and then I will um, be speaking for the League of Women at the League of Women's Voters Brown Bag Lunch on Saturday at one o'clock on my little semi vacay. I'm going a single, no children, no anybody else, little quick trip, but I'll be speaking. Nice. So those are my pitches for the evening. Oh, and I will be, I, if you guys don't know that I will be, I'm, we're trying to get Paul to have it be assistant director of DEI as opposed to the DEI coordinator, but that will be me. And I'm very excited to have a director because they can deal with all the politics that I, and I can do the work. Congress. That's Thank great. You, Mr. Moisten. Nice. Yep. Thank you. And just um, a follow-up comment, um, Russ, I did see that you forwarded that email to us um, this morning. I just haven't been able to communicate with Brianna in regards to a response, but we, we have seen it. So thank you for forwarding that to us. Um, and with all of that being said, I would like to call this meeting to adjourn. I second. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for running the meeting so nicely. Thank, thank you. you all. Good meeting, everybody. We yeah, got through the whole works. agenda, right? Yeah. Yep. Next, that meeting, right? <laughs> next meeting next Thursday, same time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, Debra, stay Debra. safe. Thank it you. Yes, have oh, a safe trip back. Everybody. I'll be traveling Never. back on that Thanks, day. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you, I keep sending you all some African vibes from over there. There we go. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Jennifer, can uh, I say one other thing to you? Yeah. 
I just okay. wanted to appreciate I want, the, I want a cookbook. <laughs> All right, if I find one, I'll bring you one, okay? <laughs> but Mr. Vernon Jones, who did you want to talk to? Uh, Jennifer, I wanted oh, to appreciate okay. the photo exhibit she put up around the plaques on Juneteenth. I thought the photos were fabulous and real. Oh, thank you. It a much fuller experience. And when I mentioned that to the town manager, he said you were there late, late at night putting it up. It was such a busy day for us the Friday night prior to yeah. um, Juneteenth. So I think Debbie Bridges and I were in there until about 1.30 in the morning. Oh. Well, I, I just wanted to say, I loved it. I thought the photos made a big difference. Oh, thank uh, you. The one of looking up Main Street when nothing's paved before the town hall was built. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, that was a cool one, right? And then the other one, there's the, the family reunion, I guess it is, in front of Hope Church. Yeah. You know, that's basically in front of my house. Oh, uh, yes. That's uh, Anika's uh, family. So and, and yeah. Debbie's family. Yeah, that it, it was yeah. fantastic. So great just to visualize that, you know, right out in the street in front of my house. Yeah, you know. there was a lot of really neat things that happened about creating that event, right? Like just yeah. history yeah. facts and just mm -hmm. it was really fantastic. I thought it was a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I know you made it happen. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.